Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to select my April TBR. All right, everybody, it is once again time to do some challenge pulls and play the My Bad TBR game in order to select what I'm going to be reading for April. But as y'all know, before we do that, we have to determine how I actually did in March. So of course, starting with the challenge pulls, challenge pull number one was actually a challenge prompt, and that was to read a book related to the sea. And for this, I originally selected Be Still My Heart by Sav R. Miller and Emily McIntyre. And ultimately, I got maybe a chapter or two into that, and I decided that it was not going to be for me. And so I basically stopped reading it, and I'm going to be unhauling that book. And so in its place, I decided to read The Last One by Will Dean. I did read it and I did satisfy the prompt of reading a book related to the sea. Challenge number two was another challenge prompt and that was to read a book that features a personal phobia. Now for this, I originally selected Falling by TJ Newman, but I received a very kind gift in the mail from Amanda over at On the Middle Shelf. She sent me The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James and I decided to read that because I think I'm more actively afraid of ghosts than I am of falling from the sky in a plane, whatever that says about me. So I went ahead and read that to satisfy the prompt. Challenge poll number three was actually one of your recommendations. As a reminder, all throughout 2024, I'm doing a read like my subscribers project. I did an announcement video for this project during Bookmas where I asked you to leave me five books that you wanted me to read. They could be some of your favorite books of all time. They could have been your favorite books from the year or just books that you've enjoyed and you think I will enjoy. However, you wanted to recommend me books. And I put all of them in the challenge mug that I will be pulling from today. And one of them got selected last month. And that was Dachshund Through the Snow by David Rosenfeld. Now, this is a story that is 100% outside of my comfort zone. It is a cozy mystery type series. It was recommended to me by Janine. So thank you so much to Janine for recommending the book to me. And I did read it. So I did satisfy that challenge pull. Challenge pull number four was simply to read the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. And I definitely did read that. And challenge pull number five was yet another subscriber recommendation. This time it was a recommendation by Nakia and it was Neon Gods by Katie Robert. And I did read that. Moving on into the prompts I got from Gameplay. The first prompt I had to satisfy was to read a book that gave me winter vibes. And for that, I selected The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn, which I did read. Next, I had to read a book that was featured on someone else's TBR. And lucky for me, Brittany from Be The Book Nerd posted her TBR and on the TBR was Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. And I did read that in March. Next, I landed on the prompt to continue a series. And for this, I finished Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. Next, I landed on the prompt of Second Chance. And basically what that means is I have to give an author or a book a second chance. Maybe it was a book that I had DNF'd or maybe it was an author I had tried before and they just didn't do it for me and I wasn't planning on continuing with them. So for this, I chose The Coppersmith Farmhouse by Debney Perry. I had actually tried Debney Perry twice before with this book included and I had DNF'd the books early on because I just realized based on the way that the book was headed that it was not going to be my thing. And unfortunately, the same thing happened with The Coppersmith Farmhouse. I got further in it this time than I did the first time, but it was just going in a direction that I did not like. I felt like it was going to be a little bit too insta-lusty or too insta-lovey and I just wasn't here for it. So I ultimately went ahead and put that book down and I did not choose to pick up anything else to satisfy that prompt. So I'm actually going to pull out a king. Y'all know that these are my get out of jail free cards. I have pulled so many kings over the past year and a half of gameplay and I've hardly used any of them because I typically complete my TBR, but this time I'm not going to complete my TBR. And so to avoid having to take a punishment, I'm going to use my king. Although in this instance, I will be unhauling the Coppersmith farmhouse. And then the very last prompt was to read a book talk fave. And for this, I actually selected The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yaros. And unfortunately that was another one that I decided to stop reading very early on. But luckily enough, the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez did satisfy this prompt. So I don't need to take a punishment for that, but I will be unhauling The Things We Leave Unfinished as well. All right. So for the most part, I would say that March was pretty successful in reading, even though I did stop reading three books, I ultimately ended up satisfying the prompt and I've had a pretty successful reading month overall. I've really enjoyed a lot of the books that I've read, but now it is time to do the challenge prompts. I really hope that this is kind to me. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do pull number one. Now I'm filming this on my new camera and y'all know that it's been quite the struggle to learn how to use this and I'm still feeling miserably at it. And I was playing around with this and it will not let me get close to the lens and focus on it. So I'm gonna have to hold these pieces of paper pretty far back. Hopefully you'll be able to see them, but if not, you're just gonna have to trust me when I read off what it is. So let me go ahead and make this first pull here. Set during a holiday you don't celebrate. Okay, so this is actually a reading challenge prompt. So I'm going to have to find a book that is set during a holiday I don't celebrate. I'm gonna do my best to find a book that I am actually interested in reading that is set during a holiday that I don't celebrate or don't want to celebrate basically. So this is one that I'm going to have to do some research on to figure out what I'm reading. And if I do know what I'm reading by the time I edit this, of course, y'all know that I will pop up on the screen what I'm reading. I'm gonna have to figure out this focus thing. So if y'all know anything about cameras, I'm using a Sony camera. So if you know how I could potentially get it to focus when I'm holding 
holding something like directly into the lens right there, please let me know. I think it might have something to do with the fact that it's programmed to really just focus on my face. We're gonna see. Okay, but here is draw number two. It's a long one. Okay, holy cow. It says, small things like these by Claire Keegan. This was recommended to me by my Sunny Reading Corner 6777. So let me go ahead and pull this book up because I've actually never heard of it before. Okay, so this says, it is 1985 in a small Irish town. During the weeks leading up to Christmas, Bill Furlong, a coal merchant and family man, faces into his busiest season. Early one morning while delivering an order to the local convent, Bill makes a discovery which forces him to confront both his past and the complicit silences of a town controlled by the church. Ooh, okay. An international bestseller, Small Things Like These, is a deeply affecting story of hope, quiet heroism, and empathy from one of our most critically lauded and iconic writers. So I've actually never read anything by Claire Keegan, but this definitely sounds like a book that would be right up my alley. Oh, and it sounds like it won the Booker Prize in 2022, which is interesting because I'm typically not really interested in the award-winning books. I feel like they're a little bit too highbrow for me, but this sounds like something I could really enjoy, and it's actually only 128 pages according to Amazon. So it's like a short little novella. So this is something that I could bust through really, really quickly. So I'm very, very pleased by this one. All right, draw number three. Got one here. Set in a landlocked country. Oh my gosh, why am I getting all these challenge pulls that I don't already have books selected for? Okay, so this basically means I have to read a book set in a country that doesn't have like ocean access, essentially. So that is another one that I'm going to have to do research on and try to figure out. And once I know, I will pop it up here on the screen for you. All right, number four. Okay, this one's tiny and it is tightly wrapped. Okay, why do I do this to myself? Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. So this is actually a book that I decided to unhaul. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove it because I'm not going to read it. All right, back to draw number four since that one was a bus. Got one here. The word secret in the title. Okay, this one actually works really well because for this one, I'm going to be reading The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. I already have this one pre-planned. This is the follow-up to The Housemaid, which I really enjoy. I have now read three of Frieda McFadden's books and I've really enjoyed every single one that I've read and I don't expect this one to be any different. I'm really excited to follow Millie after her experiences in The Housemaid, especially after it ended. If you know, you know. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. All right, one more, one more, one more. Ooh, it's another tightly wrapped one. I think it's another one of your recommendations. The Haunting of Blackwood House by Darcy Coates. This one was recommended to me by Rogue Rosie. So thank you very much. I'm going into this one a little bit trepidatiously because I have read The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates, which was just okay. And then I DNF'd another book that I tried by her called From Below. So Darcy Coates hasn't really worked out for me in the past, but of course I'm willing to give this one a shot because you recommended it to me. And maybe this is going to hit right place, right time. And I'm going to really, really enjoy this. So this is a horror novel that is going on my TBR for April. All right, now that the challenge pulls are out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. But first, I have a couple of housekeeping items. First, this is the very first time that I'm filming the TBR game with my new camera. There has definitely been a huge learning curve involved with this camera, and this is certainly going to be no different. So I apologize if there are any focus issues or anything like that, but hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully you can still see for the most part. Also, you might have noticed that I redid my board. I spent a couple of weekends redoing the board, and so while several of the prompts are the same, there are actually quite a few new ones on there as well. And so because of that the pawns on the board are in relatively the same space on the board that they were when I ended the last round, but they might not be on the same exact prompts because I also completely redid the locations of all of the prompts and things like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in with draw number one. All right, we got a three, which is a straightforward movement and the color red. And luckily our red guy is just right here. So we're gonna do one, two, three, and then it's going to be read a book with green on the cover. All right, so the very first draw was a number three and the color red, and that landed me on the prompt to read a book with green on the cover. And I'm actually going to use Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan to satisfy this prompt because that cover is almost entirely green. And I was going through my own physical TBR and I didn't actually have a lot of books with true green on the cover. So this is going to work out very, very well. If you are not familiar, I do not allow myself to double up on books for prompts in my TBR game, but I'm allowing myself to double up between the TBR game and the challenge prompt. So since small things like these was a challenge prompt, I'm allowed to use one of those challenge books to satisfy a TBR prompt on my TBR game, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and use small things like these to satisfy the green on the cover prompt. Now on to draw number two. All right, well, that was a jack, and that means no movement because jack is a skip card. Next, I drew a jack, and again, that is a skip card. That means I can skip any prompt that I'm really not interested in completing, and I'm not going to be using the jack for this round, so it's gonna go back in with all my stashes of jacks and kings that I pulled along the way, and it's just gonna hang out there until I need it. Draw number three.
All right, we got a number five and the color green. I only have one active green pawn out on the playing field, so I'm going to flip the board and we will move him. All right, let's go ahead and move our green guy. One, two, three, four, five wormy pick all right next i drew a number five in the color green and that landed me on wormy pick so this is a new tbr prompt that i added to the board i'm a member of the patreon of sid bookworm and in her greenhouse patreon we call ourselves the worms and so in this instance i went to the discord and i asked them to recommend me a book i gave them a few parameters to stick to but i didn't actually give them a list to choose from so they were basically allowed to select anything that they wanted for me to consider and one of the recommendations is one that i actually own and it's currently on my physical tbr so i was a good girl and i decided to make that selection blacktop wasteland by S.A. Cosby. Y'all know that I really loved S.A. Cosby's Razorblade Tears. I read his newest release, All the Sinners Bleed, a couple of months ago, and it wasn't nearly as good to me as Razorblade Tears, but it was still a really strong story, and I'm very much looking forward to getting into this one. S.A. Cosby's books are typically very gritty, they're very dark, and they often deal heavily with racism. I would say that his writing is very beautiful and lyrical for a thriller author, if that makes sense. I don't typically read thrillers with the kind of prose that he has, so I really enjoy his writing. This says, Beauregard Bug Montage is an honest mechanic, a loving husband, and a hardworking dad. Bug knows there's no future in the man he used to be, known from the hills of North Carolina to the beaches of Florida as the best wheelman on the East Coast. He thought he'd left all that behind him, but as money gets tight, his carefully built new life begins to crumble. Pushed to his limits by poverty, race, and his own former life of crime, Bug finds himself drawn inexorably back into that world. When a smooth-talking former associate comes calling with a can't-miss jewelry store heist, Bug feels he has no choice but to get back in the driver's seat, and Bug is at his best when the scent of gasoline mixes with the smell of fear. Haunted by the ghost of who he used to be and the father who disappeared when he needed him most, Bug must find a way to navigate this blacktop waste or die trying. So that sounds absolutely phenomenal. I am 100% here for it and I'm excited to be getting to this one in April. All right, draw number four. That basically means that whatever color I draw, they get to immediately go into home base. So let's see what lucky pawn is now safe. All right, this blue guy right here is safe. So we're going to take him. We are going to move him into home base. And this guy automatically gets to go out because I'm allowed to have one pawn of each color actively out on the playing field. All right, and then next, the game was very kind to me once again. And I drew a queen and the color blue. And that means I was able to move one of my blue pawns into home base. So that blue pawn is now safe and nothing can touch him. So now I actively only have one blue pawn on the board and we are getting closer and closer to finishing this round of gameplay. All right, draw number five. All right, I drew a two and that means that I can either move forward to or move a pawn out of start. Now I actually only have one pawn left in start and that's this guy right here. So I will likely just be moving forward to. I also have to draw again. So let me go ahead and see what color I'm moving. Okay, yes, it's red. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the board once again. We'll move forward two and then we'll draw two more times instead of one more time. All right, I'm gonna move forward this guy two and that is most recent acquisition. So one of the most recent books that I've purchased or received, I'm going to have to read. All right, then I drew the number two and the color red and that landed me on the prompt to read my most recent acquisition. And for this, I'm going to select The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This was so very kindly sent to me by Laura over at Laura Reads as a birthday gift. I was so shocked when I saw it come into the mail. I recently read The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. I've read two other of her works and I'm excited to get to this one. I really, really enjoy Kate Quinn as a historical fiction author and I try to get to all of the things that are sent to me as soon as possible. So this was the most logical choice for this prompt. This says, Bold, reckless Nina Markova grows up on the icy edge of Soviet Russia, dreaming of flight and fearing nothing. When the tide of war sweeps over her homeland, she gambles everything to join the infamous Night Witches, an all-female night bomber regiment wreaking havoc on Hitler's Eastern Front. But when she is downed behind enemy lines and thrown across the path of a lethal Nazi murderess known as the Huntress, Nina must use all of her wits to survive. British war correspondent Ian Graham has witnessed the horrors of war from Omaha Beach to the Nuremberg trials. He abandons journalism after the war to become a Nazi hunter, yet one target eludes him, the Huntress. Fierce, disciplined Ian must join forces with brazen cocksure Nina, the only witness to escape the Huntress alive. But a shared secret could derail their mission unless Ian and Nina force themselves to confront it. 17-year-old Jordan McBride grows up in post-World War II Boston, determined, despite family opposition, to become a photographer. At first delighted when her long-widowed father brings home a fiance, Jordan grows increasingly disquieted by the soft-spoken German widow who seems to be hiding something. Armed only with her camera and her wits, Jordan delves into her new stepmother's past and slowly realizes there are mysteries buried deep in her family, but Jordan's search for the truth may threaten all she holds dear. Holy cow, that sounds phenomenal. This, I'm gonna be honest, has the potential to become my new favorite Kate Quinn. I am hyped to get to this one. I've already put it on hold at my library. It's supposed to be coming in within the next couple of weeks and I will be getting to it as soon as it comes in because I am down for this one. All right, draw number six, which is no longer the final draw. 
All right, well, that was lucky because a king is a get out of jail free card, which means once again, no book is chosen. So, so far I've chosen a jack, a queen, and a king, all of the face cards this round. So the board is being very kind to me. So my next draw was actually a king. And as I just mentioned, a king is a get out of jail free card. So it means I don't have to take a punishment if for some reason I don't finish a book on my TBR. And so again, this is gonna go live in my stack of kings and jacks until I actually need it. All right, and then the seventh and final draw. All right, y'all, you are not gonna believe this, but I drew a four and the color blue. And four is a backwards movement, which typically is not fortuitous. However, you will notice that the blue who just got out of star is right there by home base. So once I move him back four, he will be primed to go into his safety zone. So let me go ahead and flip the board one last time and we will move him. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, fall. So that means I need to read a book that's going to give me fall vibes. And then my very final draw was the number four and the color blue. And that was very fortuitous because my blue had just come out of start and I went backwards four and now blue is primed to get into home base. He could be the very first one of my pawns to get all four into home base and then he would be done playing for the time being. But this landed me on the prompt to read a book with fall vibes and for that I'm going to select Murder Road by Simone St. James because what book screams fall more than a paranormal thriller from Simone St. James? I don't know. I'm very much looking forward to this. From what I understand this follows a couple in the 90s and they pick up a hitchhiker on this infamous road where a lot of deaths have occurred and then they take her to the hospital I think because she's injured and then the hitchhiker dies at the local hospital and the couple April and Eddie find themselves in the crosshairs of the Cold Lake Falls police. Unexplained murders have been happening along Atticus line for years and the cops finally have two witnesses who easily become their only suspects. As April and Eddie start to dig into the history of the town and that horrible stretch of road to clear their names they soon learn that there is something supernatural at work. Something that could not only tear the town and its dark secrets apart but take April and Eddie down with it all. I'm here for it. I really really enjoy Simone St. James some more than others but I am very much looking forward to seeing what she can do with this one and I'm looking forward to all of the 90s vibes. All right everybody that is it. Those are all of the books that I have on my April TBR and I'm going to be honest and I'm really hyped for a lot of the books that I'm going to be reading. I still have to make a couple of selections that I will hopefully be able to put in post editing but for the time being I'm really excited about what I know I already have on my TBR. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this video or let me know what are some things that are on your April TBR. I would love to know. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me some type of road emoji in honor of both Blacktop Wasteland and Murder Road by Simone St. James. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments down below. I love the engagement and it helps me and my channel so so much and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I typically post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video until next time y'all